from Mr. Roy from Texas for his opening statement. I thank the chairman. Uh, good morning. And before addressing today's hearing, I'd like to take a moment to express my deepest condolences to the family of Chairman Elijah Cummings, to my colleagues uh, on this committee and throughout the body, and also to his staff. Uh, I know it is a great loss. I know just a couple of months ago we were having a pretty nice sparring session here in this committee, as we are wont to do on occasion. And uh, I had referenced my son in the context of talking about it. My son happened to be here, and he was sitting back here in a chair. And the chairman graciously, this was in July, uh, asked to meet my son and sit and talk to him. And we've got a great photo uh, of my son with the chairman that I will cherish, and uh, I will miss him uh, dearly, as I know many of us will. Um, as always, I'd like to thank Chairman Raskin for his work with the subcommittee. Uh, I appreciate it very much and, and respect him immensely. Uh, with that, of course, here we go. We'll start our sparring. Um, I must say I'm puzzled a little bit as to why the Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Subcommittee was chosen for this topic. We have a subcommittee on the environment. Um, I think that might be a more natural place for it, but uh, here we are. I would also suggest to you that um, there are, if you're wondering why there are uh, many of our colleagues aren't here, uh, it's in significant part because the House uh, majority has created a scheduling conflict. The House majority has scheduled depositions today as part of, uh, of their inquiry. As a result, uh, members have been forced to choose between this hearing and the deposition, and that choice is not very easy. So a lot of my colleagues are downstairs, uh, which is where I would be if, if I weren't uh, in this hearing right now. Um, you know, in my opinion, there's been a lot of arbitrary rules set by the chairman that makes it difficult. A lot of members feel like they have to be there because we're not easily able to go find the transcripts. We're not able to go see what's going on. Now, that's not obviously what we're here to discuss, but it is. Uh, it merits at least discussion and recognition that this is what we're having to deal with as a body right now uh, without our ability to have our colleagues be able to see the information that Mr. Schiff is keeping secreted away in the bunker down below in a, uh, in a skiff. Um, but as to the, the topic that we're talking about uh, here today, um, you know, I think if you, if you look at this, much of today's hearing has been seemingly orchestrated for some period of time. Uh, some of the, the witnesses here today, I think, have been coordinating for years, uh, going to meetings and discussing, pursuing congressional hearings and getting sympathetic state's attorney general in an effort to secure documents from different oil and gas companies. Uh, the purpose of this hearing seems to be to stir up a media frenzy and provide storyline for the current court case going on in New York, a case that isn't necessarily even involved, uh, isn't even about allegedly covering up the truth about climate change anymore, but is instead about accounting disagreements in many respects. Um, and demonizing companies and the Americans they employ for political gain does not seem to be a productive use of our time. While we sit here in an air-conditioned hearing room powered by natural gas from the Capitol Power Plant, it's where we sit. So let's just remember about how our lives are powered right here today with the electricity right here in this room, the air conditioning, the heat in this building throughout the winter, a gas-fired power plant, natural gas being the lifeblood of what we're seeing in a renaissance for energy in the United States of America, creating jobs and wealth and opportunity and developing and improving lives around the world. Um, today, 815 million people around the world suffer from food insecurity. 900 million do not have access to electricity, and every year, 3.5 million die of pollution from biomass they burn inside their homes. We have significant uh, information demonstrating the explosion of affordable energy has increased the standard of living and nearly doubled life expectancies around the world. Over the past 25 years, more than a billion, a billion people have lifted themselves out of poverty due in large part of access to electricity. Now think about that. And I was once in a focus group. Somebody said, well, we want to get, where do we want to get power? Well, not from coal or gas. No, we don't want to get power from that. Where do we want to get power? And the person said, from electricity. Where does electricity come from? It comes from a number of sources. Texas, by the way, leads the, the, the nation in all of the above approach in terms of wind and solar being a significant part of the grid in Texas. Yes, that great evil bastion of oil and gas, Texas. That governor, Governor Perry, who for 14 years was driving an all of the above approach in Texas. But at the end of the day, our grid in Texas still is massively powered by the dense energy that is available in fossil fuels, making lives better every single day making a single mom be able to have access to affordable electricity every single day. Unlike the 54 or 55 million people in Europe choosing between heating and eating every day because of the onerous regulations placed on them, people in the United States of America, including the most vulnerable and the most poor among us, are able to have the lifeblood of power, of electricity, hospitals that are powered up where babies have incubators that work instead of people squeezing bags in Africa where you don't have access to a power abundantly. 
So we sit here today talking about civil rights and civil liberties. Let's talk about the massive violation of civil liberties that will occur if we do, as Elizabeth Warren has said, ban fracking. Let's crush the American economy and crush the jobs in not only Texas, but around the United States and ban fracking in a fit of hysteria, undermining the very civil liberties of the Americans that depend on that affordable and available uh, abundant energy. That's what we should be talking about. That's what we should be talking about when we're talking about civil liberties. And that's what I think we hope we'll have discussion today in this hearing. If you look at the number of people that have been driven out of poverty over the last 25 years, compare that to the chart of the doubling, tripling, quadrupling, six times amount available of gas, oil, and coal powering the world that has lifted people out of poverty in, uh, throughout the, the world and in the United States. With that, I'll yield, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Roy. I want to welcome our uh, first